Today we're going to spin up a SQL Azure database. Uh, we'll connect to it via ADONet using a data reader. Um, this will show how easy it is to create a, a, a database uh, in Azure. Um, so the main focus here is to create a database in Azure and show how you can manage it much in the same way you would manage a DB instance on-premise. So we'll start by creating the database. Um, we'll configure it uh, so that certain IP addresses can connect to it. Uh, then we'll switch over to SQL Server Management Studio and we'll run a script to create tables and to populate them with data. Then we'll create a simple console app which we'll use ADONet to uh, retrieve data using a data reader. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing we need to do is to log into Azure and uh, if you don't already have an account you can get a free uh, month trial and uh, it'll allow you to, to basically utilize $200 worth of services. So go ahead and get that set up so you can log in. We've already got ours set up so I'll go ahead and uh, switch over to Azure and I'm logged in. And um, what we'll do is we'll go right into creating a database. So you can go ahead and select SQL databases or you can just click new down here. And uh, we'll go ahead and say um, data services SQL database. We could do custom, we could import um, from an existing database, uh, but we'll just go ahead and do quick create. I'm going to call this positions because I've got some data that I want to um, go ahead and use in that database and it's going to expect the database to be called positions. Um, so we could attach this database to an existing server. We already had one spun up. Um, but we're going to go ahead and take a new server. We'll take the new one there. And uh, we can choose all these different uh, locations um, to host our server. Uh, we'll choose uh, the closest one here, which would be Western US. I'm going to go ahead and put in my uh, username and password here. And we'll go ahead and create our database. So it shouldn't take too long. You see um, it's going to go ahead and create a server to host our database. There, we're done. Um, let's go ahead and select the database and we'll come into the dashboard. And there's a couple things we need to do first. Uh, we need to manage the allowed IP addresses that we'll be able to connect to this instance. Um, and then we'll go and look at the connection string. So let's go ahead and manage the IPs. Um, now in this particular scenario, I'm going to connect from my client. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, allow the IP that um, you know, my own IP and set up a rule for that. Now you could go ahead and set up a rule that um, allowed your entire submask uh, 0 to 285 um, and so just find out where you are within your company so that if your IP changes you'd still be able to access it. But this should be fine for me. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And let's go back to the dashboard. Um, the next thing we're going to want to do here is um, trying to remember why it has a different view when you first create it. Here we go. This is the view I wanted. Um, actually, it's a slightly different to manage, I suppose. Dashboard. Here we go. Okay, now we're going to go in and find the connection strings, and I'm going to go ahead and pull this down, copy it down, because I'll use that in a minute. So that's the other thing you'll need. And you see, here's the host name right here for connecting, and uh, we have a user ID, and, and uh, it's typical to put the uh, username at the server name. You can see the server name, and this is chosen for you. And, of course, uh, it doesn't expose your password, so you need to plug that in. But here's essentially the ADO.NET connection string. And you notice we also have ODBC and JDBC and PHP here. Um, so it's just reminding me to do this. I've already done this. Uh, I don't know why it's still uh, asking me about that, but we'll go ahead and... Um, cancel out of that. So we basically created the database. We created a server. We've 
um, allowed us, my IP to connect and we've got the connection string. So um, let's move on. Um, check my notes real quick here. Okay. Um, one thing to point out is that we can connect to this instance that's in the cloud uh, via SQL Server Management Studio and that's what we'll move to next. Um, so you can do all your normal uh, you know SQL Server maintenance kind of operations via the Management Studio um, and connecting to this instance in the cloud. So let's go ahead and shift over there and do that. Um, so what I'm going to want to do here is go ahead and connect. So let me go ahead and um, you know, so let me go back and grab that really quick. Um, okay, sorry about that. Let me go ahead and grab the connection string again. As I essentially want to grab out of that this here the host name. So we'll go back to SQL Management Studio, put that in. SQL Admin, I'll put in my password. And we'll go ahead and connect. Okay, so we've connected to the database in the cloud, the Azure database. And um, we've got our positions database. It was created for us. Of course, there aren't any tables in there. Um, so let's go ahead and I want to run a script here. And I have a script that will, a uh, T-SQL script that will automatically create the tables and populate them with the data I want. And uh, this data was part of a, um, a Microsoft Virtual Academy um, a video. Um, it, and so I've just uh, grabbed it out of there so I could use it to populate some data in our, da in our database. So we'll go ahead and run this. Um, let me just make sure it will execute. There shouldn't be a problem. It did, so we'll go ahead and run it. And even though we're running this locally, it's actually uh, executing this against the database in Azure in the cloud and um, populating that database with the uh, data that we have in this script. And then it does uh, some selects at the end here. So you can see it's populated the tables and we'll go ahead and drill down and take a look at that. I guess I'm going to have to refresh. Um, okay. So here we have the cruises table and places, positions, time zones. We'll do a quick select. And you can see we've got data in the table there. So the next thing we want to do, we've got our database set up. We populated it with data. Um, let's go ahead and create an application um, in Visual Studio to um, query that data. So we'll go ahead and create a project. And I think I'm just going to call this, um, say, Azure DB Demo. And we want a console app. We'll say OK. OK, and the first thing we're going to do, let's create a, uh, well, it's not quite done yet. OK. Let's go ahead and create um, a call to SQL Data Reader. We'll create a SQL Data Reader class. Data Reader Demo. And we'll go ahead and um, get Visual Studio to generate that for us. Um, we'll go ahead and set up our connection string. Um, I've actually got the string. Yeah, this is another string, but well, well let's let's just say, um, yeah, let's go get that string. Okay, save this. And we'll go back. I didn't actually save it earlier, but it's still here. Easy to grab. Let's go ahead and grab that. And we'll go back to Visual Studio. We'll paste that in. So basically, um, what we've got is we've got our host name here. We've got um, the database name, the user ID, and then I'm going to have to paste in my password. So let me go ahead and do that. And I'm going to change it right after I make this post the screencast. 
so no one else can get in, but that's what we've got there. Now let's save that. So we've got our connection string. Um, make this static. Okay, connection, we'll call it string. Okay, now we have to use that. Um, let's see, let's actually move this out here. Okay. And I've actually got the code all set up here. I'm going to go ahead and bring it in. Um, so you have to wait for me to type. And we're basically going to just use a simple um, bit of code here. Uh, I'm going to have to bring these guys in. Hang on a second here. SQL client. Save that. Okay. So um, let's go over what we're doing here. Um, we've got our SQL connection. We built our SQL connection string. Oh, I, I, I put my password in, right? Okay, so we're all set. And uh, we're just doing a simple SQL connection with a SQL command, SQL data reader, and we're just going to iterate through um, the data reader there um, and spit out the data. We're going to look for just the top 10 records, and we're going to pull four items uh, from that. Um, table. Um, so let's go ahead and run and we'll see if we can get back our data. Okay. Okay, one thing I didn't put in was um, a way to stop things so we could see what was going on. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, um, let's just say, okay, we'll do that and then we'll, um, read line, okay, that should do it. So let's go ahead and run again. Okay, so here you go. Let me bring this on down. You can see we've got our four columns that we are printing out, and there are ten records. So this actually um, did connect. Let me go ahead and continue there. Did connect uh, to Azure, to our database, and retrieve the data. Um, so let's see, we, we had to create, uh, you know, it was, it was quite involved when you think of what we had to do to actually get that data back. We had to create a SQL connection object, SQL command object. We had to open the connection, create a data reader object. We had to execute the SQL. Then we had to iterate through the record set using the read command. Um, so we'll, sh we'll uh, in a subsequent screencast, I want to talk about some other ways to do this, um, specifically linked to SQL and Entity Framework, which makes this a lot easier with a lot less uh, work to be done. and. Uh, uh, less likely to cause problems. Um, so we'll, we'll do that in a follow-on uh, screencast. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, I think that's it for today.